I was on opioids prescribed by the VA and the United States Army for over a decade. I, I had participated in the medicinal program at Walter Reed, uh, 90 days, and I just took a gel cap twice a day. And during that time period, we went cold turkey off of opioids, and we were on massive quantities at the time. Uh, there was very little withdrawal, only in the initial few days, and it was more like nicotine withdrawal than I would equate to withdrawal from that legal heroin. And we felt fantastic. Our energy levels improved, our cognitive abilities improved, um, pain was decreased, everything was fantastic. 90 days afterwards, they said, thank you so much for participating, but it was a trial study and it's not legal. Now that marijuana is legal, I've gone completely onto the medicinal marijuana. I have eliminated over 50% of the medications I take, uh, most of which were medications I was taking to compensate for side effects of the medications I was taking. It's helped with anti-inflammation, pain relief, cognitive abilities, post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, spinal cord pain, um, ankylosing spondylitis, other rheumatoid arthritis issues. Um, and then, in addition to all that, which I wasn't expecting, it's helped with my acid reflux and my col ulcerative colitis. When I left the military service in 2017, they had me on medications for a variety of different things, from PTSD to neuropathy. Um, I was over-medicated, and I had a small child at the time. She was a toddler, and I couldn't function. So I decided to start medicating with cannabis, which at the time was illegal. Mm -hmm but it created a better quality of life for me. You know, everybody says it's a gateway drug. Yeah, it is. It is. It's a gateway to a better life. I got my life back by using cannabis. I could function. I was more alert and there for my daughter. Uh, with some of the other medications they had me on, and, and a lot of them were antidepressants, some of the side effects are that they cause suicidal ideations or suicidal tendencies. And it's, I knew I couldn't keep going that route because I was kept having to change medications because of that that just overwhelming feeling of like, why am I here? What's the point? I'm in pain constantly. I'm down, I'm depressed. Once I got off those medications and started medicating with cannabis, it's, I, I was there, I was present again. I could be there for my child. I could function, I could get up and do the daily normal activities that I needed to do, clean my house, take care of my kid. Um, I wasn't able to do that before. I can get up in the morning and it usually takes a couple hours before I start noticing pain setting in and I'll uh, I usually I do edibles for the most part and uh, I make my own and uh, rounding in the morning and within a couple hours I can get up and get out and go do things and not focus on how much it's hurting. I can actually go out if I want to help my wife in the yard or if I want to, uh, we want to travel, um, go places and do things. I'm not, I'm enjoying myself. I'm not thinking about, well, I wish I was at home and laying down. You know, Brent and I, uh, you know, after having a bookstore here uh, for a long time, uh, he encouraged me to fly a little bit and, and look at business opportunities and, and perspectives from outside of the area. So I went to, uh, to Rockville, Maryland, and, and I started spending some time in his innovation center there. And soon after that, uh, Brent and I, uh, I met John Powers, uh, who's CEO through, uh, through their common business uh, and which was uh, dealing with CBD, and we got involved in that and got involved in growing hemp. Because of the uh, common thread of now John Powers and Brent, um, there was another Wesleyan uh, graduate that uh, Brent and I had engaged with that told me about Jason Queen, and he said, you really need to introduce yourself to Jason, let him know some of the things that you're doing and little did I know that uh, Jason, who had a security business at the time, would take the ball and run with it like he had. 
I, I grew up across from the armory. I played basketball in that armory. I, I, I drove an M1 tank in that armory. I shot guns in that armory uh, and, uh, and hung out and played everything from horseshoes to touch football around that army as a kid growing up and actually watch it being built uh, in, in the mid 60s. Uh, I had toured some very similar facilities and actually the, the largest and most profitable one in uh, Colorado, a group called Native Roots and they were basically in a very similar building. So I just said, well, I have that building sitting in my hometown, why, why not? And so uh, that's kind of how it all began. And I came back and, and got with this group and said, I think we have the possibility and here's a perfect building. And obviously uh, my relationship with economic development in Upshur County and Rob Hinton, we were able to, to cut a very reasonable deal to get that building. I met the team that makes up Army Pharmaceuticals, at least the foundational team, uh, about seven years ago in Baltimore. And they were with a company called RX Remedies and they were focused on CBD and uh, hemp production and CBD production. They, at that time, I was the economic development director for the county and I saw that as an opportunity to recruit, at that time, a CBD manufacturer to West Virginia, specifically in Upshur County. Um, we had this big building that we had taken over, um, the old armory, three foot concrete walls, it's just a monster of a building, and we had very limited opportunities for use for that building. It was a very hard building to market. And ironically, <clears throat> there's two things that would have worked well there. One is a data center, which population doesn't suit itself for a data center here. Um, and the other seemed to be uh, along the lines of hemp and CBD manufacturing. Ideally, the perfect situation was a controlled grow environment for medical cannabis. And so John and team with RX Remedies formed a new company and they were gonna go into and make investments in the medical cannabis field. What makes this company a real asset, not only for Buchanan, but also for the state of West Virginia, is that their expertise and the science and the knowledge that they have as a team to go down the path uh, when it's available to create FDA approved drugs. That is such an advantage for a state like West Virginia who wants to create an economy based on knowledge-based businesses. When the armory was built here in Buchanan, it was built through a bond from the people. The people paid into the bond, built the armory, and that's the way it was in all the armories that were built back in the 60s. It was built in 62. So that's really a people's building. Now it was built originally for a armored regiment, and that building was built to support an M48 tank on the drill floor, okay, and to take a mortar hit on the roof. The reason the community wanted to build it was because not only they would have a military presence, but they got to use it as a, a, a community building. Bingo, Shriners, uh, weddings, and craft shows. Used to have the craft show there. Uh, the one that they have at the middle school now, they had, had there. It was a big event. I mean, it was a traditional thing. Strawberry Festival. They had something in there for the Strawberry Festival. The building's just a structure, but the community is what makes any organization. And I will tell you right now, um, uh, this community is very supportive of anything that promotes the well-being of the people in this county. I've been operating a facility, a cannabis facility in DC for the last 10 years and now in West Virginia. Um, my responsibilities here are everything from design through construction management, oversight, and then operations and all financial aspects of the business, making sure that we're going to be profitable and uh, also making sure that we're putting out a high quality uh, premium product to the to the patients of West Virginia. Yeah, so after working in DC for 10 years and figuring out all the ways to do it wrong, 
uh, and then having to rebuild rooms three times over to get it right. Um, I was able to learn from all those experiences and put all the best pieces of the puzzle together to come up with this, this design. And this building has been in this town for a long time. There was a lot of jobs that were created locally for this building and bring it back to life and its former glory is it's been an exciting project to work on and you know we're we're not an out, a bunch of out of towners who are going to run uh, who are going to operate this facility we're going we're going to combine our skill sets from what we've learned over the years in different states and then train people here and provide the jobs locally so that the armory can once again be a major part of the town um. Basically, we started at an old armory building. Demo was a long process. Um, everything's concrete, lots of rebar. It's, it's very well built. You know, it's, they used to pull tanks in here, actually right about where I'm standing right now. Uh, it's a different breed of concrete, you know what I mean? It's hard to jackhammer through. So we had a lot of uh, work for all the plumbing, all that stuff, and then Got the, all the underground out of the way and we started putting it back. Uh, built a structure inside of this structure. This is it. The steel for this structure is on the inside of the wall panels. The amount of HVAC and power and it was just a different, a different job. Um, so everything went as smooth as it possibly could with a great bunch of guys. Welcome to Army Pharmaceuticals. This is our grow and process facility here in Buchanan, West Virginia. This is our mother room. This room is where our mother plants would be, female mothers. This is where we would uh, take cuttings off of those plants, start new plants off of those cuttings. Our racking system is uh, pretty neat. Basically, we maximize the square footage in this room. We're about to enter the water room where all of our water and uh, nutrients that feed all of our plants, all of it's run out of this, this brain center. This is our isolation vault. This is where any plants that were showing any uh, signs of anything out of the ordinary if we wanted to isolate them. Here we're going to enter one of our vegetation rooms. We take the cuttings off the mother plants, start new plants out of those cuttings. Um, once they're started, they'll be moved into the vegetation room to start the, the second phase of growth. The reason you see two layers of uh, racking here is because the plants are in a smaller growth stage, so we can fit more in a smaller space by using two tier. So here we are in one of our uh, flowering rooms. You can see everything is clean, crisp, and new. Now we're going to enter one of our two drying rooms, so once the plants are harvested, They'll be brought into the drying room. There's an exact parameter of days down to the hour, how long a plant takes to dry. This room is our trim and packaging room where once the plants are dried, we trim the flower and process all of the cannabis into final product. This is one of our two vaults where all of the packaged product, when everything is complete, will come to be uh, in secured storage. This is our mechanical room where all the power comes into the building. This uh, is our laboratory where all of our uh, chemists, scientists, and doctors will do their work doing research and development, extracting oils and things from the plants. So in our facility, we'll start off with seeds. We'll grow those seeds into uh, full plants. We'll test those out, see which ones are the best. We'll keep those for our mother plants. And then from the mother plants, we'll take clones of those, which we will take into clones. We'll take those into the clone room. Uh, we'll grow those out for a, a short amount of time, and then those plants will transition into our vegetation room, which those will grow until the, our adequate size. And then from those vegetation plants that we'll be growing, we'll also take those into the flower room that I'm in right now. Uh, those plants will continue growing until the end of their cycle. Uh, once the plants have reached their full maturity, we'll harvest these plants, and then they will go into our, our drying room and then from the drying room, they will go into full production after that for our processing. Army Pharmaceutical decided very early on 
that it was going to spend close to $10 million to build a facility in Buchanan, West Virginia. The reason we did that when we could have done it for a million and a half, maybe $2 million, you can grow a plant under controlled levels under today's regulations at the lower number. In order to make a drug or make anything assembling that, the levels of control you have to have are so much higher. The levels of control we need are to be able to look at any plant in any room with the exact moisture and humidity and temperatures and lights and every single thing in those control systems has to be done by a cell phone. We can now control our facility down to the most minute corner of a room and know exactly what's going on. That's a pharmaceutical level of control versus just a more horticultural level or agricultural level of control. So we built the building five times the cost of what anybody else would do to make a state-of-the-art facility that I'd put up against anybody's in the country right now for the control levels that are in there on the presumption that we will be a regulated industry down the road and we will need these levels of control to prove that we're making the products at a more pharmaceutical level than today's marijuana level. To make a pharmaceutical grade product is to think just a little bit differently than the average person who's growing a medical marijuana plant today. So today we grow a plant, we tag a plant, we trim the buds and the leaves where all the, uh, the co compounds are, and then we either uh, will put that into something that can be inhaled or ingested. Um, so that's today's method. What we need to do is we need to then take that a step further. We need to take that, pr uh, that plant, that product, we need to take the ingredients out of it and now we need to put it into either a tablet, a tincture, an injectable, an inhalable. These are all the, the methods of application that we have for today's pharmaceutical products. It's a little bit different than saying here is a piece of chocolate with marijuana in it as to here is a tablet with exactly 10 milligrams that you're going to put under your tongue that dissolves for this particular intended purpose. So the same ingredient just looking at it a different way and moving along the spectrum of from today's market to tomorrow's pharmaceutical market. Why don't we go take a look at our lab here? This is what we're going to replicate in West Virginia. And you'll get to see all these botanical medicines that we're talking about, some of the terpenes, some of the others that we're going to be mixing and matching to make these medicines. So welcome to the lab. This is what we were talking about before. These are all the botanical compounds that we were discussing previously. So by mixing and matching these botanicals, for example, glutathione, which has a tremendous benefit to immune system, or uh, theanine, which can be used for sleep, or glucosamine, which is a precursor to the amino acids that we need to repair tendons and ligaments in our bodies. By mixing and matching these with some of the terpenes and some of these others that we have here, we're able to compound drugs that can be used for very specific purposes. This is the lab that we're going to replicate in West Virginia. In this room, we will mix and match all of the chemicals that are going to be going into these tincture bottles. That creates a batch that we're going to make. That then liquid is pumped through the peristaltic pumps in a clean environment into these bottles. The caps are then applied they come down the filling line, are then labeled. From the labeling, they go to the collection table, and from the collection table into these trays where they can be, then be brought out of the clean environment, fully manufactured and packaged, uh, and put into boxes and ready for distribution. We can create botanically-based medicine using today's conventional methods of testing them. That's what Armory Pharmaceutical exists to do and we're doing it in Buchanan, West Virginia.